Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Bumuntu. This was sent to me by WizKids and is designed by Tim Blank. Journey through the jungle and follow the animal's guidance, each one moving in a different pattern. As you travel, you collect their tiles and earn their favor. But be warned, as fewer tiles are left in the jungle, you must be more strategic in how you move. Be the tribal leader with the most favor, and the animals will help bring your tribe to prosperity. Let me show you how to play. So in Bumuntu, you are tribal leaders following the guidance of the animals, and you're journeying through the jungle in hopes of winning their favor. At the end of the game, the leader who has accumulated the most favor wins. You start with uh, a set of eight different animals. Um, there are uh, like two other animals that are not included in this initial set. You can mix them up as you choose. Uh, and the tiles are all mixed up, and the favor tiles are also all mixed up in a list. Then each player will place a pawn on the outer ring of the jungle. Let's just go here, 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 and here. Sure. So first off, at the start of your turn, you, if you have any food chips, uh, you can use them to you can discard them to move your pawn that many spaces in the jungle. Then you do your movement. So I can either uh, move one space, and that's my turn. Or I can uh, move according to the animal that I'm on. So let's say the green player decides to activate the tarantula that they're standing under, or standing on. The tarantula's ability lets you move one or two spaces, then you may move any unoccupied tile to any empty space. Um, so let's say tarantula decides to go one, two. Uh, since they use this tile, they collect it. Then they can choose to move a tile, any unoccupied tile, to an empty space. So maybe they go, mm, I'm going to move this tile and put it there. Some tiles, like the one you just took, have a bonus action on them. In this case, there's a banana on there. That means you take a food chip. And then any tiles and chips you get go behind your handy player screen because this is secret. So after I grab my tarantula tile and my chip, I can store them behind uh, my shield. This is also handy because it tells you all the abilities of the animals, the scoring system, and the turn order. And everyone's information is hidden. Another bonus action you can do, you can see this uh, tile has a brown background on it. That lets you uh, change up the advancement tiles. So let's say I, uh, green player moves according to the draft. Well, the draft lets you move one, two, or three spaces. So let's say they go mm, one, two, three, and they move here. Now the tile they just moved off on, they take it, put it behind their shield, and with the brown background, now we can look over at this board. At the end of the game, uh, depending on this favor list, the animals are gonna score different ways. So right now, for example, each crocodile will score two points. Um, each zebra will be worth one point. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways. Like, for example, uh, if you have the most tarantulas at the end, you'll have seven points. Second place gets three points. Um, and so they all have different values. But when you use a tile with a brown background, you can swap two of these adjacent tiles. So let's say you go, mm, actually, I want zebras to be more valuable. So boop. I think I'm gonna go hard, hard on zebras. Or they go, mm, you know what, I think tarantulas are a little too powerful right now. I'm gonna swap these two instead. Whichever you pick, you just swap them. So whenever you take a brown background tile, that is what you are, you are allowed to make a switch. Now, as far as movement rules go, you can't walk through opponents. Empty jungle spaces are still in play. You can land on them and move, uh, uh, move on to them. Um, when using an animal's ability, you must be able to complete the movement to collect the tile. Uh, if there is a rare chance you are unable to move, your turn is just forfeited. But yeah, you have that either that regular movement, just to move, or you use the animal ability, move, and take the tile that you were on. Now, once all of these brown advancement tiles have been taken off the board, that's when the game ends. The player who picked it up makes the final adjustment on the favor board, and then everybody will score. And so, scoring is simple. You just count and see how many of each animal you have. So if this was the final board, everyone would score two points for each tarantula, uh, one, point for each er, I mean, one point for each giraffe, and then you would see who was first place and second place for each animal. If you had the most crocodiles, you get seven. If you have the second place, you get three points, and so on. If there's a tie for first, 
uh, you receive the favorite equal to silver. And tie for second, uh, they just receive one favorite each. Uh, there are also uh, Nikisi tiles. Uh, let me find these for you. So any tile with this mask symbol, uh, the Nikisi tile, uh, the more of these you collect, the more points you'll earn. So one of these is just worth one point, but if you can collect all eight of them, that's uh, 20 points. So uh, the more you collect of these, the more that you will be rewarded. Um, for Yoa, there are also these Yoa symbol tiles. Uh, when you collect these, uh, six favor to whoever has collected the most of them, three favor to whoever has done the second most for that symbol. And finally, uh, let's get into the animal abilities themselves. So I already went over the giraffe. It lets you move one, two, or three spaces. I also did the tarantula, which lets you move one or two spaces and move any unoccupied tile. The zebra, let's say I started on a zebra tile and did my action. I can move horizontally or vertically any number of spaces, uh, kind of like a rook in chess. Uh, you may use the zebra's ability to move only one space if you'd like. So, uh, let's say the zebra's gonna go mm, boom, and you pick up the zebra, you'd also get a food ship uh, for that. Here we have the alligator, or crocodile. Here we have the crocodile. You move one or two spaces. If you land on an opponent, you can move them one space in any direction. So if I use, if I activate the crocodile, I can go one, two, I can move this person uh, onto here. If I activate a chimpanzee, like this one, uh, I can move diagonally any number of spaces, like a bishop. Uh, so I could go, mm, I'm gonna go here. And then I would take it, I would also get a favorite tile. Or I'm sorry, a food tile. Flamingos aren't on the board, but if they were, Whenever you activate a flamingo, you fly up in the air and move to any unoccupied flamingo. Um, and so they're kind of like teleport pads. The lion, if I activate a lion, I move exactly three spaces in one direction, then move an opponent one space in that same direction. So I could go one, two, three, take that tile, and I could move an opponent that direction. Let's say black mamba, let's say I was on here. Um, I would move one or two spaces. So let's say I move one, two, then move all adjacent spaces, one, then move all adjacent opponents one space away. So if I took, activated this one and landed here, they would get pushed away. If I activate the elephant, I can move exactly two spaces in one direction. Other players cannot move you while you are on the elephant. So it's a passive ability. So when I use it, it just does, you know, two spaces. But as long as I'm on one during the other people's turns, I cannot be moved. And finally, the rhinoceros is not on the board, but if it were, if I, if I activated it, I charge as far as I can in one direction and any opponents in my way, I would push. So let's say this was here, I activated it, I would charge forward and push these opponents as far as I could. Otherwise, that's the game. You use activate animal abilities to do different things. Pick them up, try to change the score with your advancement tiles, and you can maybe go for some of the bonuses with the uh, uh, different symbols on the tiles. Otherwise, uh, you score according to the favorite chart at the end. Uh, and that's the game. So first off, the look of the game is nice. The tiles are very nice quality and it has a fun, striking art style. Presentation is great. Uh, I think my biggest problem with the game is that the animals, a lot of them don't feel super distinct to me. Like, yeah, there are some slight variations on abilities, but a lot of them just involve, you move a couple spaces. Yeah, sometimes you move another person's piece, but it doesn't feel that interactive. The fact that movement is omnidirectional on top of super simple abilities makes the game feel a little too simple for me. Uh, I personally would prefer if the animals had more specific uses. Um, if there was more confrontation, maybe, or if there were more difficult choices to make with your movement, like maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, more restrictions. Um, most games that involve this sort of gradual tile removal make it so that you can't walk on the empty spaces, but since you can in this one, it never really ramps up or gets like tense. It's just, yeah, I can just kind of go wherever. The set collection is also fine. It's like any other set collecting game. At the end of the day, sure, you're collecting sets, but I feel like in this case, the hidden screens kind of work against the game. Like, being able to see what other people have would actually force you to be more active. Like, oh, I can see that person is really going for tarantulas. Yeah, they're trying to go for this. Can you remember what people are doing? But it, it, 
it doesn't it doesn't really feel that interesting to me. This game needs tension, and if the if the screens were public and you could see people's tiles, then it might be a little more interesting. Because at the end, you just sort of, with the switching the favorite tiles around and collecting, it just kind of feels like you're in a vacuum, and then at the end of the game, you go, okay, reveal! Oh, uh, oh, you had more than me. Okay. Overall, I think the game has very solid presentation. The gameplay is a little too simple for me. Um, I think a more aggressive version of this, or one with more tension, maybe more restrictions, maybe more confrontation, and more variety and abilities could work. Like, when I saw all these different animals, I was expecting, like, oh, like, a lot of different things you can do, but a lot of them just involve kind of moving around. So with what we have here, I thought it was, it was okay. It wasn't something I was crazy about.